this is Tony Fennell with Rock My World, and today we're lucky enough to have director Stephen Cantor and producer Jamie Schutz on the line. Our guests have put together the highly acclaimed documentary about fish frontman Trey Anastasio called Between Me and My Mind. Hi, guys. Hi, Tony. How are you? Hey, Tony. Well, firstly, I wanted to say thank you very much for taking the time out to talk with us today, as I know you're inundated, and rightly so, with requests for interviews. So, a quick introduction for those of you that are hearing about the movie for the first time. The documentary chronicles Trey Anastasio of Fish as he starts work on a new side project, while at the same time preparing for Fish's New Year's Eve shows. Coming off the back of a fantastic premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival, Between Me and the Mind will now be screening in movie theatres across North America for one night only, July 17th. This has got to have you guys totally psyched, right? Yeah, it's an unbelievable opportunity. Very rarely do documentaries go across the nation to 500 theatres. Yeah, so, I mean, it, yeah, it, it's, it's totally... Well, Totally insane. I mean, you, you guys are going to rule that night. But um, let's let's talk about how the film came to be. Firstly, Stephen, what was the driving force be- behind the two of you to make the film, and what were the main obstacles you faced uh, and had to overcome before day one of shooting? Well, the driving force was really Jamie. I was aware of Fish, and I definitely respect that they're great musicians, but I was not a huge fan. But Jamie is my now longtime business partner, is a huge fan, and really wanted to make this film and he's the one who lured Trey and through first through his manager Patrick and then Trey into our office for a meeting and right. the meeting that went on for three hours and said that it went on for two years because really we just never stopped talking after that wow. first meeting and eventually just added cameras to the mix. Excellent. Well, uh, here's one for you then, Jamie. Um, how did you guys come up with the idea, or you actually, come up with the idea for the film, and had the two of you worked on any projects together prior to making the movie? Yeah, so, as Steve mentioned, I'm a long-time Fish fan. I've been a fan since 92, and I uh, always thought it would be great to be able to make a film on Fish and Trey, but obviously never really thought it was possible until I reached out to Patrick, who's Trey's manager, and we started having a conversation, and then Trey came in and met, and as Steve mentioned, we just sort of started from there. So it was a very exciting process, and uh, I think it probably just all goes back to being a fan uh, from 1992 that I just really thought that these guys would be interesting subjects, and specifically Trey. He's such a creative guy and has, is just overflowing with ideas. That And as a fan, I really didn't have that much insight into how he actually created everything. Right. So that was really what drove this, is my curiosity to see behind uh, the creative process. Well, actually, that, that leads me to my next, next question. Um, how difficult was it to separate yourselves from being fans of the band and Trey, of course, and being movie makers. I mean, that must have been pretty hard at times, you know, the old church and state scenario. How did you separate the two? That was hard for Jamie. That, that was never an issue for me. <laughs> no, it wasn't, it wasn't not, hard not for that me. I'm not a fan of yeah. it. Mean, I do really respect that they're great musicians, and I'm a huge fan of Trey, both professionally and personally. I think he's an amazing guy, and I yeah. think his life and conversations with him and the film are just exploding with kindness and creativity, and, yeah. and I love being around him, so I am a fan, but I mean, it was, you know, it's business first. Well, I get, I, make I, sure I, we're making a great movie here. So. Oh, it's, absolutely. I mean, and I read that Trey made the decision to allow you guys to make the movie because he was impressed by the filmmakers' his pitch about letting people into the creative process. And my question to you both is, how did that initial meeting go down? You kind of alluded to it earlier on, but was it a long, drawn-out process or was Trey pretty much on board straight away? Stephen or Jamie? I think for the first, for the first at least, Three or four months, he was very apprehensive. Oh, really? It was very touch and go. Uh, I think he was in a place of like, my life is fabulous right now. I've I'm on top of the world. My career is going great. Fish has never been hotter. We're in incredibly vibrant, creative time right now. My yeah. marriage is great. My kids are great. Why would I ever want to expose anything or take any kind of risk with a documentary? And and he was interested and liked our films and. We kept talking and we were shooting some stuff and then all of a sudden he sort of crossed the threshold into this is going to be a really great experience for all of us. And once that, once he crossed that point and committed to it, there was no stopping. He was fully on board. He never one time, we were allowed access to everything, never told us to stop shooting. There was no question was too difficult. In fact, he wanted to go deeper into everything. That's awesome. So once he was in, he was in. 
Well, this, this, this is a question for Jamie. As well as capturing, the obviously, the creative process for Trey's Ghosts of the Forest album, you guys relied on unprecedented access to Trey and the rest of Fish's preparations for their epic, you know, the Soul Planet New Year's Eve show in 2017. Firstly, that must have been an intense and a serious trip for you guys. But more importantly, can you explain how you were able to be up close and personal and yet still stay out of the way enough for Trey and the band to do their thing? Sure. Um, yeah, so obviously it was exciting as a fan to be around Trey and the rest of the band. And mm. I think, like most documentaries, you start to gain the trust of your subject. And also, you start to gain the trust of the people around the subject. Mm. So the tour managers, the managers, the sound people, really everybody that helps put fish on stage every single night is looking at these new people coming into their environment saying, who are these guys? So I think we had to earn their trust, which we did over the course of two years of shooting. I think the other thing that helps too, Tony, is the fact that as documentarians, we come in with relatively small crews. It's usually just Steven, myself, our cinematographer and the sound person. So the footprint that we make is very small and I think we've been able over the years to figure out the nice balance between being too invasive and also uh, being uh, uh, just on the fringes. Yeah, I mean, I, I've actually been lucky enough over the years to tour myself. And tour buses, as big as they look on the outside, they are very, very small on the inside. There's, there's, <laughs> you know how that gets. And, and, and again, hats off to you that you got through that. Um, this, is, this is a question for both of you. Was there ever a moment during the filming where either one of you guys thought, oh boy, you know, we've bitten off more than we can chew here? I mean, you're on the road with Trey and the band for a year, and there must have been some point where you must have thought, oh boy. How you managed to stay out of the way is, is, is really quite, uh, quite interesting to me. Well, I'll just, I'll just say from my perspective, and then I'm curious to hear what Steve has to say on this one. I've always felt, and Steve knows this, an incredible responsibility and also an incredible pressure to deliver a great film that fish fans would embrace awesome. because as a fish fan, I know fish fans and I know how much they love this man and also how uh, obsessed with the details they are. And so I knew that we were definitely going to have to over deliver so that fish fan said, you know, this is something that I can get behind and I really like. And so far, people seem to be enjoying the film, which which really, you know, brings me a lot of pleasure. But I have to say that that was nerve wracking because I really wanted to make a film that fish fans embraced. Well, that's it. I mean, it, it, you can you can dial it in all you want, and and real fans will actually see that and will understand that straight away. It, it's quite obvious that there's a lot of love here. Um, I got one last question for the both of you. The movie's finished and uh, it's had nothing but rave reviews. But if you had the opportunity to go back in time and add one more scene to the movie, what would that be? And of course, you can say, no, it's perfect the way it is. But I thought I'd ask, Stephen, how about you first? Is that the wrong thing to ask? <laughs> oh, it's a good question. No one's ever asked that. I mean, over the course of two years of making this film, I, I was. You know, every single morning my phone would ring and my wife would say, oh, it's your work husband, then it would be Trey. Oh, wow. And we'd be talking through all the possibilities for the film and the album and what exactly we were capturing. And he really thought it was, a, you know, a exquisite timing. It was just such a creative, yeah. burgeoning period for Fish and for him personally. So we captured him just at the perfect moment and he gave us access to everything. There was nothing. I mean, I had two years of thinking about this for every single day and talking to Jamie about what we might shoot and anything we wanted to shoot, we had access to. So wow. I don't think, you know, if there's anything, there's nothing that I think, oh man, if only we had captured that. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would agree with that. with that. With that said, Trey, as you know, is extraordinarily creative yes. and also extremely um, talkative and shares a lot. So we have quite a few scenes that never made the movie and lots of interviews and lots of footage that never made the movie, which at some point hopefully we'll be able to share with, with the fish public and, and the rest of everybody. Um, but I, I agree with Steve that there's not one particular scene that I say, you know, should have been in the movie, but there are probably 30 other scenes that at some point, 
hopefully we'll make a DVD extra or something like that. Oh yeah, and you, you can guarantee the, uh, the, the diehards will be absolutely clambering for that sort of stuff. Listen, um, I've actually found out it's playing not far from me here in Massachusetts, so when we get off this call, I'm going to uh, book tickets and I'm going to get a nice big comfy chair and watch it. I just want to say thank you very, very much for taking this time out with me today, you know, and I really do wish you continued success, and I hope you have a blast wherever you watch the movie on July 17th. Stephen and Jamie, really, I, I, I want to thank you so much for taking this time out. Have a great rest of the day, and good, good luck with the movie, boys. Thank you, Tony. Thanks for the enthusiasm. Really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you, Tony. You got it. Enjoy. Thanks, All guys. All right, take care. Thank you. Bye, guys.